Welcome back for another OG Show Live. Mr. Randall, how you doing? What's up, everybody? Welcome back to The Real Down. Welcome back to another episode of Bass Fishing Community. Hi, boys and girls. Welcome to, once again, the Bass Guy Can Pass. Brother! This is the final cast. Another segment of uh, Chasing the Tide, your saltwater connection on the pallet. Welcome back, everyone. Another episode of Feather and Fur, your host. Welcome back to the Mindset Podcast. I'm your host, Chris. Hey, welcome back to Off the Water. Hey, guys. Welcome to the Rusty Hook Kayak Fishing Podcast. Episode is brought to you by Pelican, built to protect. Eastport Marina, Dell Hollow's number one destination. And Yak Gadget, American made accessories and gear. Welcome to the Rusty Hook Kayak Fishing Podcast. A member of the Paddle and Fin Podcast. We're streaming live via Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook. Bring you the latest in fishing tips, gear reviews. Now, let's join John Rapp for us. Hey guys, I'm here at the Brownstone Room here in Mount Nebo, West Virginia. Uh, the Tractor Bar and Grill, this is their event location. I was just in here uh, talking and hanging out with Mary when she was talking to a few folks about the uh, renting the place for a wedding venue. So, yeah, man. So, hey guys, thanks for stopping in, tuning in. Mikey, appreciate you hanging out. I see we got a couple people on Twitch. A uh, couple on the paddle and fin, and even Twitter. The live feed on Twitter is rocking. Okay, so I appreciate you guys uh, hanging out with me. Uh, make sure you go to like, share, comment, so I can see your your name up on the on the board there, like Michael's. And let me know that you're here, and so we can uh, talk all things kayak fishing. Chris, brother, what's going on? So, um. <clears throat> This episode uh, is fly by night, okay? Um, I've been watching Facebook as, as all of us do. All of us are in the feeds and we're watching what's going on. And uh, man, I hate it for old Chad Hoover, uh, but I, I've been there for him. You know, if you guys haven't heard, make sure you go look at K, KBF page. He had a couple of kayaks and a trailer stolen at his uh, headquarters down in Huntsville, Alabama. So, you know, go look at it, get the descriptions, and keep your eyes open. I, I had that situation happen to me back in 2017. Kayaks were stolen right out of the back of my truck. Um, in between, you know, and I have feel-free kayaks, you know, so we all know they're not the, the high-end boats. Um, but they took my feel-free lure and they took best little Mokin 10 light, uh, left my camping gear. They they took those, and then right beside my stuff was a big, or was a um, Steve Gunner, my buddy from Winfield, had his Jackson Big Rig uh, decked out. And then there were a couple of new canoes decked out. I mean, big bass boats all around me, but... Where I was boxed in, I guess they, they felt they could get in there and they could sneak around, grab stuff, and get out. Um, but yeah, so Chad Hoover, feel for you, buddy, and I hope uh, something happens there and then get your stuff back. Also, um, I was just talking to my good buddy Jerry Spradley. I'm going to throw up the scene here for you guys to look at. If anybody is in the market, he is selling uh, a couple of Dorados decked out. He's got a He's uh, upgrading to a newer uh, platform, newer Dorado. But you can see over here on his page, it's Jerry Spradling. Um, what all comes with. Uh, one boat is fully rigged out. And then uh, the other boat 
is I guess used for you can use for parts. So, but you know, you're looking at a $2,500 kayak here. So, Jerry Spradling, take a look at that if you get time, and uh, jump over there and make him an offer. So, yeah. So, man, yeah. Checklists. You know, I've been seeing everybody putting down stuff on their checklists. Uh, guys talking about buying good locks for their kayaks. And, uh, I had an episode that I did earlier this year where before I went on my road trip with Ryan Schiller and all the other guys, we, you know, we did a road trip to Florida, went to ICAST, and we met at Jay Randall's place. And then we went from him, his house, to Jimmy Skinner's. And uh, so, you know, we were doing a lot of traveling. So I, I ended up buying uh, a couple of really nice locks. And what was cool about the, the they were bicycle locks, okay? But the, the one bicycle uh, lock is sort of like a cable lock that you would use for like a tree stand or, or other stuff. But it was uh, Bluetooth activated. So you had, you, you would put it on your boat, you know, you would connect it. And you would hear it lock via a locking mechanism. And to open it up, you had to use your Bluetooth app to open it up. And if somebody cut that cable, it was alarmed. It had a, a, one of those high-pitched alarms on it. So if the cable was cut, it would set off that alarm. So it was pretty cool, pretty sweet. I used a couple of those. So if you're looking for something re re relatively cheap, that would be a, an avenue to go is uh, look Look at, go to the Walmart, go to Amazon. I think those things were like 49 bucks a piece. I use them at the house because uh, I have four boats. I have three of them in the garage, and I got one outside underneath my carport. So the one in the carport's got several locks uh, locked up to it. Um, so plus I got cameras. Uh, old, old trooper, old law enforcement. I, I do everything I can to make sure I, my stuff's protected anyway um i want to hear from you guys um my situation is about to change and i'm sitting here thinking i need to start making some budgetary uh, items some changes you know fishing gear is not cheap and we need to do our best to take care of it and not only take care of it but keep it in good working order and when you replace it you want to get something over do you want to you want to spend money on something that only lasts a season, or do you want to spend the money on something that's quality that could last you five to ten years? So um, I know my situation's about to change, where I'm retired and I have a full time job. Uh, I, I believe here in the near future I'm going to uh, turn in my resignation and be a full time retiree. So. That means that's a cut of income probably by two fifths. You know, we're, I'm talking a, a cut of a yearly income of forty five, fifty thousand dollars a year. So that means I'm going to have to sit down and make decisions on what I plan on doing for tournament season. Now we've all seen the different tournaments that have popped up. We say Tyler Bean, thanks for jumping on, brother. Um, but, uh, what, you know, when we have these, these, these tournaments that we're wanting to do, you know, we all seen that the trails have come out with their locations and I know I'd like to go, uh, I want to go to Santee Cooper. Paddle and Finn is having their big open, um, April 22nd, 23rd that week at Del Hala, Tennessee at Del, uh, at, at Eastport Marina. So make sure you go look that up. If you have not been to that event, I'm telling you, it's, it is an absolute great time. I'm, I, so I, I'm already going to book myself a week to go there. Uh, that's after I, I plan on, hopefully, if, if the economy allows me and, and my pocketbook will allow me, I'm going to turn in my resignation and I'm going to go spend a week down there. So um, if you were watching last week, we were talking about that, had Romel on here from... Newport Vessels, and that NK300 is screaming my name. I've got the 180, so do I break down and spend two grand 
to try to sell my 180. We're going to keep the 180 and go ahead and get upgrade my lithium battery to a good battery to run that baby. Now, I'm telling you, I love that that uh, system. As a matter of fact, I, I got a video I'm going to share here with, with you guys um, where I rigged up a couple of kayaks. I'm only going to show the one, which is the Big Fish 103, how I rigged it up to use the uh, the the NK-180, and, you know, it, it got up to about 3, 8, 3, 9 miles an hour. At some point, it was pushing at 4 miles an hour. But after going to Lake Erie um, with some friends, I want to put the XI-3 on that big fish so I can spot lock that baby and do some bed fishing because Buddy Vance, a well-renowned kayak angler in the West Virginia area, absolutely went up there and put on a clinic catching big fish um, he was averaging 18 19 inch smallmouth all in the three plus pound range had a couple near five pounds and i think his biggest fish was almost 22 inches but he had boats following him around he had a hobie set up with the xi3 um, he even he he the guy has eagle eyes had great glasses he, he cruised around, he'd find a fish, and they were moving in uh, to that area that we were fishing in, in May. And I'm telling you, uh, that's the one thing that I, I'm not going to miss this year is I, I've got a little camper. Um, I've already looked at some campgrounds up there. I, I'm going to pull that baby up there and spend two weeks if I'm lucky. So checklist number two, campground fees, food, uh, making sure that I have enough battery power to be able to do what I need to do. Um, and with the XI3, I've got two 60H amped batteries, and that's a 12 volt system, so that will be good. But if I don't have that set up, then I got a plan for using the uh, NK180, which will use both of my batteries for the 24 volt system. So I want to hear what you guys think. Um, how do you how do y'all fish when you're doing your bed fishing? And how do you set up? Do you do you just use your regular motors? Do you paddle? Do you have stakeout poles, anchor systems? I'm really, really curious on what you do to get yourself stationary to where you can work a bed. Um, I, I didn't do too bad up there, uh, but I wasn't very stationary. So I had to find a fish try to work it a couple times before the waves moved me out and then cast by beyond it and hopefully drag across the bed. I averaged between 15 and, and 18 fish a day and uh, I did catch a, a pretty good monster, um, which um, I did uh, do a lot of video on the Rusty Hook Kai Fishing page live using my, my hotspot like I'm doing right here at, at the tractor bar. But yeah, so um, we'll take a quick break, and then um, I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna show you that video of the setup that I have with my big fish, and and you know, and it, it's a really good kayak. It's really set up well. I'm really happy with it because I am not a little guy, and uh, now that I've got that boat set up for this coming up year, I've got the swivel seat. David Lowry, brother, thanks for watching. Who we got there? Tyler. Tyler, all right, man. Thank you, bro. Um, I took my glasses off. I can't see my who's popping up on my screen. XI, yeah, buddy. Uh, yeah, I, I really, I, I mean, after what Buddy did with that XI three, I'm really looking at that. So that's that's on one of my lists um, to buy. And you know, one of the guys that sponsors my show. If you're a new canoe guy, you all really know him really well from his battle with Romel at ICAST which he's been on the shows several times as Fletch Griffin down at Westbrook Supply. Uh, they're a really good friend of mine, and I have really thought about, as a matter of fact, I was on the, uh, the, the, field, the Three Waters page today, and somebody was talking about uh, wanting a, mount, a front mount for the big fish. And uh, I've talked to Fletch, and I think I'm going to have to make a trip here from West Virginia down to Atlanta and take that boat down there and let him play with it. The dude can absolutely kill the, the builds. But uh, that, that, that's the one thing I, I'm looking at, Tyler. I, I really, if I break down and spend that money on that, then I got to spend that extra money to make sure it's set up right. Um, I don't want uh, 
when I go somewhere, because I plan on going for two, three weeks at a time, uh, or not, or you know, four or five days at a time, week at a time, here this next year, I, I want my equipment to, to not fail me. So that goes back to what we were talking about when we do our checklists. Do we spend money once and buy quality, or do you go ahead and get cheap and, and, and get in excess? Um, that's my dilemma. I, I'm used to the quality stuff, I, and I pretty much will stay that way. Good thing about having this second job all these these past several years, I've been able to build up my my toys. So when you know I do hang up the hang up the gun belt, then um, I'll be all right. I have everything I need. So uh, let's take that quick break, and then um, we'll go to that video. Ace Resort, West Virginia's number one destination for whitewater, hiking, zip lining, and more. Check out aceraft.com. That's Brooks Supply Company, Georgia's number one go-to kayak fishing supply store. Gear, accessories, and custom rigging. Look them up, westbrooksupplyco.com. Yak Gadget, proudly supplying you with American-made products and gear. Check out yakgadget.com. Feel free kayaks. Paddle, pedal, or power. There's something for everyone. Check out feelfreeus.com. Paint Outdoors is a custom plastic maker, design consultant, product reviewer, and outdoor writer. Check out more at paintoutdoors.com. All right, guys, we're back. We're here at the Tractor Bar and Grill. Got me a Coke. Spiked. And I'm sitting here talking kayak fishing. Appreciate the, the several people. We've got a, somebody over at Twitch. i got several on the Paddle and Fin page. And i got a few people now over at Twitter watching this live now that Elon Musk has given us the opportunity to, to do some stuff live video there. Appreciate that, Elon. You're the man, buddy. So um, I'm going to pop up this video. And, guys, a really cool feature about that I have now using Prism Live Studio is that I can stop my feeds and I can draw on them. And that's, I was practicing on that there a little bit ago, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and pop that up, let y'all see if it'll run, and then we'll go. I'll show you how, what I've done. So look at this right here. What I did, um, I had a starboard on the back of this, and what I did is I changed it and I. I bought some of these metal brackets from Tractor Supply, and I put them together. There's a bolt there. You can see one here. And then right here on the handle, I got a couple of, I got those U-bolts, some rubber gaskets to hold it nice and firm. Um, so when I was doing my tests with that, um, it actually ran pretty well. But afterwards, you'll see the second test. Um, but This is Summersville Lake. Uh, the Hello, guys. Ramp. It's John Rapp down there. I'll go over my Big Fish 103 Kayak real quick with you. Got my stickers on it for my motor. I've got a Lawrence touchscreen 7 set up up front. Right in front of it is my control. I was to pause it there and I'm going to show you. Now, what I have my, my mount here from my, my throttle. For the Big Fish series, it has an eight ball steering right here on the left that operates your rudder, goes back and forth. And then of course you can see I have my fish finder here. Um, found that to be too much because I fish off this side of the boat mostly and I was catching, getting caught up on that stuff right here. So I, moved, I ended up moving that over next to my iPhone and I got a, a Yak Gadget bar that actually elevates and runs from plate to plate. And I use I got it sitting on it now I'll let you see what else I got rigged up here. I got a kayak cushion and uh, controller for my stuff. Newport NK180. On the other side, I've got a Yak gadget phone holder with my iPhone 10 used to do my video on the water. I've got a kayak cushion. Of course, in the middle there, I have my pedal drive. Got my guide gear, blow up vest. I got a cooler in the back. 
Got a couple of amp 60H tethered. Sitting on my Yak Gear C Tug. And then on the back, I have the NK180. So, other thing I upgraded after I, after this video, uh, the Yak Gear um, is a good little system when you have this type of materials. What's up, Andy? Thanks for watching, brother. Um, but I, I took this this starboard plate off, as you saw from the beginning of the video. But I I, I got the wilderness cart system after going up to. Um, Lake Erie with all that sand, these things just, this heavy boat, it, they just wanted to dig down in and not roll. The wilderness cart really worked a lot better, so. But, uh, hey, make sure you stick around because I got so I got some good uh, fish action about to go uh, live here in just a minute. Time to go out and give it a run, see how she does. Down here at Muddlety Valley. Alright, let me get her straightened up. 3.6 and 3.7. So I repositioned my motor a little bit and my top speed as you can see fluctuates from 3.9 to 4 point miles an hour in this big fish 103. Really, I guess it just depends on how the how the water's running. If I got a boat pushing me too, three point nine is probably the best I'm gonna get because of the style of this hull. See, I'm running a hundred percent. I got a lot of slop. But it'll serve my purpose. I cast it back along the edge of the bank here in that brush. Oh yeah, on a Ned rig. Yeah, that's a good one. All right. Surprised me, honey.
Let's get here. Putting that big fish 103 to work. Catching some big fish. Yeah. Oh, Big Daddy just got him a Summersville. Heck, it looks like it might be a spot. No, it's a largemouth. Nice old largemouth right here, back here. Testing out the Big Fish 103. Yeah, baby. Looks like she's about, oh, I'll have to measure her and take a look. That wasn't the biggest fish in the, in the lake. Um, and I caught a few bigger ones there, but that big old girl, uh, she was right around 14 and a half, 15 inches, if I remember correctly, uh, put up one heck of a nice fight. And uh, as you saw, I mean, it, it, it drug across that brush. Um, I threw a uh, Ned rig back in there. Uh, it's only about four and a half feet of water along the edge back there, and there's a bunch of of garbage and stumps from the lake. Summersville Lake is one of those uh, Corps of Engineer lakes that crawls down and comes up. And so it, it, it disposes and leads a lot of garbage back into coves. And when the water comes up, uh, when they bring it up to Summer Pool, which is right around May 1st, middle of April, um, you, of course that's right around spawn and you get a lot of uh, the, the fish back in there hanging out, feeding and spawning and things like that. So yeah, so that's that's was a pretty good night, um, good day. Uh, did a little testing with that boat, and you could see uh, I got some things I need to do to, uh, for 2023 to utilize that that platform. So I'm definitely looking at the XI3 on the front, but if not, I just got to keep working on what I have, try to figure out my best way to use that kayak up at Lake Erie when I go up in May. So yeah, hey, um, we'll switch gears now. We've been live now for about 30 minutes. Uh, got a few more, about 15, 20 more minutes to go. And I, I like to uh, do what I call the angler profiles. And I've got a buddy of mine here in West Virginia that's done pretty well on the KBF tournament scene. Um, and he's also a, a good friend of mine. I lean on him for information on, uh, on occasion. I'm going to do a, I did a profile with him. I got another one that I didn't get edited in time for tonight's show, but we'll just run his real quick, and then uh, maybe we'll dial up somebody and, and do a live interview. Uh, my favorite fishery. Uh, my favorite fisheries here in West Virginia are Stonewall Jackson Lake and Burnsville Lake. I uh, seem to do pretty well on both of those. Uh, my favorite lake overall, though, has been Lake Murray down in South Carolina. That's been really good to me as far as the, the tournament scene goes. My favorite fishing technique. That would be really anything power fishing. I think that the crankbaits uh, seem to be what's been really good to me as well and, and what I tend to start fishing with. But really anything power fishing, anything moving, anything real aggressive, um, I really don't like slowing down all that much. Fun fishing with someone. Uh, the people that I really love fun fishing with is Storm and Phil. And of course, Bunny's along on that a lot and now Sierra. So those, those are the people that I really enjoy fun fishing with. favorite uh, technique would be dead sticking uh, just leaving leave, throwing it out there and just leaving it set uh, really drives me crazy um, you know coming from a, a catfishing perspective that, that may seem a little strange but and I like I like moving I like my power fishing Where I admire the most oh, it's really tough on the pro side of things when you look at um, uh, outspoken Christians like Ott Defoe, Edwin Evers, um, of course the late Aaron Martins, uh, those are those are all guys that I look up a lot to um, for for using their platform uh, as fishermen to to make people's lives better. And on the kayak side, I'd have to say Matt Ball. I really want to spend some time with him and learn some things from him, and and see how um, how that would go. So Matt Ball would be the the pro kayak side that I would like to 
to, to learn from. All right. Appreciate uh, Rick jumping on and doing that with me. So if you guys want to join a, or do an angler profile, um, please send me a message. I would love to be able to interview you, get some video, and, and post some uh, video of you guys live uh, or uh, recorded. Uh, but I would love to love to include other folks outside of this region. So um, I think I, I see that uh, a couple of buddies of mine might be online. And uh, might give them a buzz. See if we can get them to answer. Um, Trying to ring up a buddy of mine down in Virginia to see if he'll answer. Most of the time, when people answer these, they they think maybe I'm butt down. So I I, I like to call this part of the uh, show called crank call. Okay, it looks like he might not answer. All right, so let's try another. So 2023, where are you folks going to be fishing at? I want to hear from you. you going to be doing some local club work? Or are you going to fish some uh, regional tournaments? Love to, love to hear what you think, you, what, what you got planned. Hey, buddy. Hey, Hey man, you're you're live, raw, and unfiltered on the Rusty Hook Kayak Fishing Podcast. See, oh, am I? Yeah, man, I ain't got no video of you, video of you right now, but I'm sure it'll pop up here in a second. I, I know, I know you're out in the middle of God's country in Indiana. Yep, yep. I'm actually just sitting on my couch with my wife right now, watching reruns of. Uh... What is it? Tool man. Last man standing. <laughs> Last man standing. Outstanding. Well, hey, well, I got, well, I got you on the, on the, on the line, Jim. I want to ask you a couple of questions here. I, I'm doing a, an angler profile series, um, and I'm going to profile you if you're all right with that. Ask you about seven questions, and you just answer them for me real quick. Okay, I'll hey, do my best. Hey, you're the man. Hey, so tell me, when when did you learn to fish? Oh man, I. I don't know if I still know how to fish all that well. But my, <laughs> uh, that ain't true. But my grandpa started taking me whenever I was a little boy. We'd go down to the river and we'd sit on the bank and we'd start fishing there. My dad was a big outdoorsman and we, you know, he took me around fishing, ice fishing, walleye fishing. And we started going up to Michigan uh, salmon fishing at an early age going up there back when it was legal to to snag the salmon when they oh whenever yeah they came up in the river yeah um i didn't start bass fishing until i uh saw this guy named big bass tony fishing out of a kayak whenever i was uh just first getting into kayak fishing and i thought well shoot i'll give that i'll give that a try and uh i don't know that was around i got in the kayak scene around 2018 i think is that when it was yep i think so well, I know you've you've been you're you're a big name in the scene because you've helped run clubs and tournaments and been judging and been on the uh, the kayak fishing rules committee and I mean you you're definitely well respected in the industry, my friend. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah, we we got a little club up here in Indiana. We started um, about four years ago. I think we're getting ready to start our fourth year. Um, called grassroots bass yak and it's quite a bit different than uh most of the clubs um you know we're kind of looking to build the sport in the state um our platform runs over five days we, we Dwayne has our tournament set up so that the anglers pick what day they want to fish out of those five days and it's all on one leaderboard um you know 
they're fairly cheap tournaments, $35 to enter the tournament. And um, also they're a little bit different because we run a whole series on one body of water. We got, oh, I don't know how, um, how many, we, we got 11 or 12 series going on this year. Wow. Uh, um, yeah, so they're scattered all, all across the state of Indiana. I think we have three or two trail series to um I, i'm gonna mess this all up i've been kind of out of the loop i've been let cole ritter and ryan reedy kind of head up the club here nice. lately that's good uh, that's good grow the yeah. sport grow the sport man oh yeah yep yep so so, so um who would you I, I who would you want to go fishing with for a fun day of fishing oh out of anybody, live or dead, or just, yeah. Uh, if, however, however, you would if you had your choice to go somewhere and fun with fish with somebody, who would you want to go with? Oh, I'd probably go with my grandpa again, man, because I know he'd invite my dad also. So it'd just be, uh, you know, it'd just be all of us hanging out again like it was whenever I was a boy. But um, out of out of everybody, you know, if if I pick somebody to go fishing with right now today. Um, I don't know. Probably my buddy um, Sean Boggs. I have a I have a really good time fishing with old Sean. I don't know if you know Sean Boggs or not, but he's a he's a good dude, man. So is we that, always is that who I always see you uh, trout fishing with? No, that's um, that's my other. I, I was just trying to pick somebody in the kayak <laughs> community. That I yeah. With. Whenever whenever yeah. I go salmon fishing with, that's with the. Uh, that's with a, some guys I ran around with whenever I was in high school. They're they're awesome, uh, real good dudes. Um, they're not in the kayak fishing, but yeah, we have a good time up there in Michigan every October, going up there chasing after those salmon. I tell you what, you always have some great video and some huge fish photos to look at. Oh yeah, we had a good time this year for sure. Hey, w um, so what is your favorite fishery? Favorite lake or river? Oh man, I. I don't know. I just kind of enjoy, you know, I, I really like fishing for the small mouth and the moving water. So, you know, there's a little creek here in Indiana called Sugar Creek. I, I've just kind of always enjoyed that. It's, it's, it's a, kind of a really small river, I guess. I mean, a big creek. Um, it's a trophy stream. The, the minimum size for a keeper in this is 20 inches which is pretty big for a small mouth up here in a creek you know? <laughs> yeah. i, I yeah, need to so go to that location like a, yeah it's a trophy stream so i enjoy fishing that but i don't know i i like going to the little remote places um that's hard to get to also and you know fish for the large mouth um i've got this eye trek now and it weighs 28 pounds i tell you what i've I've fallen in love with how light that thing is and how maneuverable it is. It's awesome on moving water. Um, and it's easy to move around and stuff, you know, I mean, 28 pounds, I'm getting kind of older. So I yeah. really appreciate that 28 pounds. You know? I, I know what you're saying there, my friend. Hey, yeah. so what is your favorite fishing technique? Oh man. I love to, you know, that jig, that jig bite is pretty, pretty, up to pass up you know um you know you don't know really know what size of fish you're getting because it kind of they kind of bite it the same you know it may be a little dink i've i've sent i've set the hook on them little ones and slung them all the way out of the water across, the, <laughs> across yeah. the kayak before but i don't know that jig bite because you usually get you know a bigger quality fish with the jig bite right um, and uh you know i just kind of like that what is your uh if if oh well, let me back up here guys we're talking to jim strunk from indiana he's live raw and unfiltered uh, answering a few questions for our angler profile series so we've answered that we did fishing hey uh, what anglers do you admire the most choose one pro and one kayak angler. you know i i really like oh uh um Gerald Swindle, just because of his, uh, he, you know, he, he loves his wife to death, so I can relate to that. And, uh, you know, he's got a good sense of humor. Um, you know, he's just a good old boy. I, I like him. And then, um, not to say I don't like the other ones, but he's probably my favorite. Right, right. And, and 
you know, what was the other one? Just somebody, a so, kayak yeah, somebody, somebody in the kayak fishing world that you that you uh, look up to or admire. Oh, um, shoot, I don't, I don't know. I like it. I just like, I like the whole community. You know, it's kind of hard to narrow it down just to one person. You know, um, I like, I like Josh Stewart. That guy, he's a, he's a good dude. I mean, I like Chris. Christian Fisher, I've li- I like, uh, you know, Jay Wallen. Jay Wallen is a heck of a good dude. He is. Uh, yeah, he really is. I really like that guy. Um, Smitty's a good dude. I, there's just too many, man. I just like everybody, you know. I pretty much just like everybody. Well, you're, you're telling your age in the kayak fishing community here. <laughs> When you when yeah. you're starting to talk about some of those older names, I tell you. Oh, oh and yeah. What is your least favorite fishing technique? My least favorite is yes. probably fishing that dang Ned rig. I don't I don't know. <laughs> I, I mean, I I started fishing that on a bait caster this year. That's difficult. I got tired of getting beat by everybody fishing it, you know. And uh, it's not so bad fishing it with a with a um, casting setup, you know. It's I can I seem to be able to control it a lot better and cast it and I don't know enjoy fishing it on a casting outfit instead of a spinning outfit so but that's probably my least just because I don't know it's just I mean it's it's got to be pretty dang tough before you before I start fishing a Ned so I've I've struggled all day before <laughs> I got to that you know heck that's 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 my first thing I throw so yeah I, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I, I'd do a lot better if I started out with it, you know. <laughs> no, no worries. And the last question, brother, and I'll let you get back. You and the wife can watch your, your show. Um, yeah. Is what do you consider your greatest accomplishment in fishing? My greatest accomplishment in fishing. I tell you what, um, this little thing we got going with grassroots bass yakking is probably my greatest accomplishment. I mean, you, you're probably looking for a single tournament win or whatever, but I don't know. know, There's a bunch of us that Mm -hmm. really just poured our heart and heart and we put a lot of time. It's a labor of love. I mean, there's absolutely no profit. I'm probably about three grand in the hole getting this thing going, but um, it's just uh, getting this going and just how it's taken off. You know, we went from the smallest kayak club in the state of Indiana four years ago to last year. We, well, two years ago, actually, we became the largest kayak club. And then last year, we had the largest um, single day tournament. Um, well, not single day, but the largest tournament in the state of Indiana for this uh, kayak club. So we went from, you know, nothing. And then in four years, we became the largest. So that's, and it, it's not me. It's just, you know, just this whole group of guys that, you know, that we have that's, you know, just pouring their heart and soul into this. Um, there's a lot of behind the scenes stuff that goes on every single day. Yeah. You know, a lot of communication. A lot of it's just buddy chit chat here and there. But, you know, whenever something serious comes up, you know, we, we, everybody gets involved. It's, it just all works out, you know, the way we're doing it. You know, there's really, everybody has a vote and, you know, it's, uh, we all, express our opinion, talk things out and come to a conclusion that's best for the club. And it's, it's worked out pretty good. Sounds good, buddy. Well, I appreciate you uh, jumping online and talking with us. Nothing but love for you. You still got your wood shop. You're still making uh, some nice wood trophies and stuff like you've made for me here in the past. Uh, I'm doing a lot of Christmas ornaments um, right now. So that's, that's what I'm kind of concentrating on. Well, I'm not really, I'm doing that whenever I'm sitting here on the couch, you know, a little bit <laughs> just tinkering around, but <laughs> I hear you, buddy. But you got to yeah. enjoy, enjoy your retirement. Nothing but love for you. You and the wife, y'all have a Merry Christmas and happy new year. Yeah. Great. Great. To hear from you, man. Take care of yourself. Yep. You too. Bye-bye. All right. So we're back. That was Jim Strunk. Really cool that he jumped on there with me. Uh, we got time for maybe one more. Let me see who I can maybe get up online here. You know what? I'm going to call this gentleman here. Let's see. It's 7 p.m. here, so it's, his time might be about 5 o'clock. But, uh, let's see if we can surprise him. I think he's out in 
Idaho or somewhere out that way. See if he'll answer. This guy used to be a huge on the, uh, the salt fishing back in the day. He spent a lot of time on the coast smashing the yinglings and all them other fish over there. Uh, come on, big guy. I think he moved to Idaho or somewhere like that. Out in the middle of God's country. I don't think he's going to answer. So we'll, we'll, we'll hang up there and we'll go try one more here. All right, let's get to the top of your screen and see who's up. Uh, Stocking stuffers, guys. That's the episode I'm going to work on next week. And if I'm lucky, I may have a couple people with me um, to uh, to talk about what we want in our stockings. Let's see if I can get the... Well, he, he might not be. Uh, Price. Mark Edwards. Let's see if he'll answer. He might be watching the show. Heck, he might be at work. Yo. Hey, all right. Hey, man. Uh, can you hear me okay? Yeah, I'm driving down the road here. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. Guys, we got uh, Mark Edwards on the line. Hey, Mark, I want to ask you seven questions, my brother. All right. Okay. Uh, when did you learn to fish? I don't remember. I was really young, and I grew up beside uh, my grandparents had a pond, so I'd, I'd say, you know, dad, mom and dad taking me down to the pond with some uncles, you know, fishing at the pond. So, no, so knowing you, you, you probably learned how to fish before you learned how to walk. <laughs> I don't remember. It's been a long time ago. <laughs> hey, hey, Mark, what do you, um, what is your favorite fishery? Oh, man. I've been fortunate enough to fish a lot of good fisheries. I mean, I, I don't have a favorite. Um, but um, I got to fish in New York once at uh, Lake George. And I got to say, there's more fish up north. I mean, I, I didn't finish great in a tournament, but I caught so many fish. It was just unreal. I think off one dock, I might have caught. 20 bass keepers oh wow yeah it was insane i caught 30 some fish by 10 o'clock keepers so. hey guys if y'all are just joining i got the infamous mark edwards uh online here we're doing an angler profile series with him i caught him driving and he's he jumped off the side of the road we've already got two, two questions down five to go so he he told us when he learned to fish he told us his favorite location. Mark, what is your favorite technique? The one that the fish bites. <laughs> um, I don't have a favorite, honestly. I really don't. Um, I guess uh, um, a spinner bait. That's probably one of my first, just say a spinner bait. I, I believe that. I do believe but, that. But I don't care. I don't care if they'll hit top, bottom, don't matter. Whatever, whatever they bite. Okay, um, what anglers do you admire the most? You can choose one pro, and if you don't care, also throw up one kayak angler. Uh, one professional would have been Aaron Martins, yeah. just because he's he was so versatile, and uh, he's kind of squirrel brain. I think I'm a little bit squirrel brain, so I think me and him were kind of similar in that area. And the kayak angler is Jody Queen. Yep. Jody's just so, so well spoken on and off, you know, the water and, and, and a good friend. I mean, you, if you need any help or anything, I, I had him one time years ago. I had a rudder cable break and he was over at the boat ramp helping me. And, and without his help, I'd have never got that rudder cable in there. So, yeah, Jody for sure. What would you consider your least favorite fishing technique? 
Well, um, there's there's two that I haven't done had much success with, as a as a um, or like a rattle trap bait. You know, I've just personally not had that much luck with it, or like punching grass. I've not had to. Well, there's not much grass around me, so we don't do no punching and stuff. So right. something I'm not familiar with. So. Okay, last two questions, my friend, and then you can get home and get some dinner. Um, who would you want to go fishing with for a fun day of fishing? A fun day of fishing? It would have been Aaron Martins. Yeah, for sure, Aaron. I got you. So he, he yeah. if I'm if I'm remembering correct, he just passed away with cancer a few years ago, right? Or a yeah, few months actually, ago. Uh, one year to yesterday, maybe okay, one year. Okay, yeah, it's, it's, boy, that seemed yeah, like a year. Hey, if you ever kept up with him, dude, he still fished a tour with Cam. I mean, dude, yeah. it was under like they actually. I think a tournament or two, the boat, the boat driver, or the you know where they have officials actually drove him to the spots to fish. And he still was competitive. That right. was what's great. Yeah, the dude is unreal. All right, brother. And the last question, and I'm really, really interested in your answer here because you have so many choices. And that is, what do you consider your greatest accomplish accomplishment in fishing? Uh, my greatest accomplishment is just being able to be healthy, just being healthy and being able to do what I really like doing, you know, competitive fishing. I mean, I don't have one great accomplishment, I don't think. Well, I, mean, I, I, I can think of several high-listed accomplishments. You know, your first ever Bass uh, Nation event, you finished second. Um, you're on the stage. Uh, um, and, I mean, that's definitely, I guess, the highest. I mean, walking across the classic stage that first year was, was, uh, yeah. I mean, you can't get much higher than that. No, but. I mean, you guys are groundbreakers. You, you guys were the first ones to walk across that stage in our in our sport. So, I mean, it, it, that's pretty awesome. It was, it was super awesome. And, and and little things behind the scene. I mean. So like I got to ride with John Cox and Ray Hanselman back to my vehicle because we all parked in in the same area. So you actually they ride you back from the stage to you know your vehicle, which was I was stuck in traffic with them guys for 30 minutes listening to them how they talked or how they fished the first day. You know they couldn't they didn't give each other information. They just kind of like how much weight you have and stuff. It was so neat to be there. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it was really, really awesome. Hey, brother, I, I really appreciate you taking a few moments to answer that phone call and uh, jumping on here and giving us a, your uh, information on our Angler Profile Series. Hey, thank you, John, and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you, my friend, and look forward to catching up with you here in the new year. And, uh sharing some laughs and some time on the water yeah hopefully we have a uh, uh well it's raining right now hopefully we have a little drier season next year <laughs> I, the greg kepfner curse you never know telling you. yeah yeah greg must uh, uh knew he was gonna call and it rained today or something <laughs> <laughs> hey man merry christmas to you and the family and god bless you be safe all right you too john so that was our good friend mark edwards uh Caught him on the road, and he stopped the uh, chat with us here for a minute. So appreciate you guys uh, sticking around and watching with us. We got a couple. Oh, I still, I'm loving the fact that Twitter is uh, live and well with our, our, our live feeds now. Elon Musk is making it uh, capable for us to, to do a live feed there now, so that's pretty cool. Um, appreciate you guys jumping on there. I see, uh, I see I had a couple comments. Anyway, but, um. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Um, it was short, quick, and um, just wanted to put some stuff out there. Uh, again, next week, I hope to get a, a guy or two out here to share with us. And, and if you you don't mind, go to my Facebook page or Rusty, Foot, Rusty Hook Kayak Fishing page. Send me a message and let me know what you would buy your fisherman for his stocking. You know, fishing line, a jig, plopper plopper, 
You know, what what would you put in your fisherman's stocking or your own stocking? Since most of us act as Santa for ourselves a lot of the times anyway. Anyway, but uh, appreciate you guys jumping with me here. We are live right here on the Paddle and Fin podcast page tonight. We, it's Takeover Tuesday for the Rusty Hook, um, but you can still find stuff over the Rusty Hook. Guys, if you missed this live stream, we do upload our uh, broadcast to uh, Anchor FM so you can listen to it on the road. Anyway, I'm going to sign off here. Uh, nothing but love for everybody. See you next Tuesday for the last episode of the year, and it's our, our Christmas special regarding stockings and what we uh, hope that we can give away or we can receive. Anyway, be blessed, and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you for tuning in to the Rusty Hook Kayak Fishing Podcast. Join us every Tuesday night as guests chat about their experiences, picking up a few tips, tricks, and some on-the-water techniques, new gear releases, and product reviews. Always raw and unfiltered, straight talk, streaming via the Rusty Hook Kayak Fishing Facebook page, YouTube channel, at Camo Ninja WV, and at Twitch TV WV Rap. Go subscribe and follow us on all our social media. If you miss this live stream or are traveling, use your favorite podcast platform for our audio playback on Apple Podcasts, Anchor, Spotify, and more.